What's up, guys? I'm Shannon, aka RC Princess 24. And today we're taking a closer look at these two bad boys. Axial has done it again. They have added to their six scale collection. And so now they have the Honcho and they have the Jeep. And if you're looking to jump on the SCX6 bandwagon, then I am here today to show you the differences between the two and help you make a hopefully easier decision. Because for me, I had to have both because that's just me. I'm indecisive. So let's start with appearances. Obviously, these two are complete opposites in appearances. There are only about seven parts that set these two apart. No matter how different they look, there is only about seven different parts, give or take, you know. I would say an advantage that the honcho has over the Jeep is the Jeep has a higher center of gravity, so it does tend to roll a bit more than the honcho, where the honcho has its, you know, weight distributed, distributed towards the bottom. And so it tends to stay upright a little more often. Um, but other than that, you know, I think they both are pretty close in crawling capabilities. I absolutely love them both. Um, so as you can see, the Jeep has more of a solid body, whereas the Honcho has this nice cage back here that holds a spare tire. And it also has um, some little features that we will talk about a little bit later in the video as well. So speaking of the spare tire, I see it as a pro and a con. So pro in the fact that it's scale, you know what I mean? You got an extra spare tire, it's scale. <laughs> con, if you have OCD like I do, when you go to upgrade your tires, you're going to need to buy five, not four. And we all know that majority of tires come in two packs. So you're going to have some extra tires laying around. <laughs> but if that does not bother you, then you are fine to just leave the spare tire on. Let me know down in the comments below if it would bother you or not, because it would bother the heck out of me. So while we are on appearances, um, one thing they changed from the Jeep to the Honcho is the rock sliders. Um, I actually don't know which ones I prefer. I think they both are great. I think they look good for what vehicle they're on. Um, and they also changed the front bumper. The Honcho has the DeMello off-road bumper, whereas this one is just more of a simple design. I think it's what the CRC bumper. One advantage that the DeMello off-road bumper has on the Honcho is it sits a bit higher, so it makes it just a little more capable of a crawler, in my opinion. I tend to get hung up more than the Honcho on the Jeep, um, just because the front bumper does sit a little bit lower. But still both great cars next you guys i have got to talk to you about the lights the light kit on the honcho is out of this world compared to the jeep sorry jeep <laughs> um it's actually the first thing that caught my eye about the bronco like it will blind you like no joke like you need sunglasses to go night crawling so the jeep stock doesn't have the greatest light kit it holds its own but it's not the greatest. I have yet to put a light kit in it, but with the honcho, you don't have to. <laughs> so it comes with headlights, tail lights, pillar lights, fog lights. I mean, this thing is bright. You will have no problem night crawling if that is your jam. Next, let's talk about color options for these bad boys. So for the honcho, they offer it in red and beige. In my opinion, I could be colorblind. But I think the red is more of like an orangey kind of color. I mean, I guess it really depends on what lighting you're in. Um, and then the Jeep is offered in green or silver. So obviously I opted for these two. Uh, but the other two colors are just as great. It's just personal preference. Also, what's available at the hobby shop when you go? No, I'm just kidding. Kind of. So one thing they kept the same, and I'm super glad that they did. I'm going to try to show you guys. <sighs> these things are heavy. But... <laughs> They, <laughs> they kept 
the power switch is it's in there. <laughs> they kept that in um, the same spot as the Jeep. Now, why do I mention that? Why do I love that? Well, <laughs> let me tell you why. How many times have you plugged in the battery, put the body back on, and you're like, crap, <laughs> I forgot to turn the car on. Just me? Okay, well, let me tell you, if you forget to do that on one of the Jeeps, <laughs> it's not fun, you guys. It's just not fun. It's really frustrating. So I like that the power switch is on the outside. So I just be like, oh, crap, I forgot to turn the car on. You know what I mean? So, yes, it's a huge bonus, in my opinion. And I love that Axial kept that with the honcho. Although the honcho body is not as hard to get on and off as the Jeep. So while we are talking about the ease and convenience of these babies, um, they have made it significantly easier to clip in and out. So you just, like the Jeep, it has two clips up front, just like this. <laughs> and, ready? It's a hinged body, you guys. Now, um... I am a fan and not a fan of the hinged bodies. So on one hand, it's great, okay? It's great. <laughs> Until you are, like, working on it and it comes down and hits you in the head. And let me tell you, these little thingies right here, I don't speak from experience. They hurt. <laughs> so um, it's great because it makes it so much easier to clip in and out and all that. But, yeah, if you're going to be working on it, like, hardcore working on it, just take the whole body off. Save yourself the headache. So another thing that sets the honcho apart from the Jeep is it has some more features to it. For example, it has functional stand ladders that are just right back here. There's a little screw and a little twisty thing. I don't know what you call it. And then they just come off and, you know, you can use them if you need to. <laughs> and then... It also has a box, which is held by two body clips. It's kind of hard to do because I have a high table and the honcho is already huge. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so it has two body clips and a lid, and you can put stuff in there. Um, I don't know what you'd put in there. Maybe some extra tools. Um, let's see if it holds a margarita. I have my margarita. Well, dang it. <laughs> it doesn't fit. But that's okay because I have my Gladiator to bring me my margaritas. So I do have to talk about the interior of the cab. Somebody really took some time to design this because it is, I, it, it's very realistic. Like they really put their time into paying attention to every little detail that they could. And a fun little fact, originally I thought this was a scaled up 10th scale honcho. And that is not the case, you guys. This is based off the base camp, which would explain why it's so, you know, detailed and just amazing. <laughs> so let's back this train up for a minute and talk about the tires. Um, the Jeep is equipped with KM3 tires, and these have the Falcon Wild Peak tires. So I haven't really taken the time to assess which is better, you guys, honestly. But I did, I feel like I did get some footage for you guys that maybe will help you decide which you like better. I don't know. I can't decide. Um, so if you have a decision already, please let me know down in the comments below. I'd be really curious to see what you guys think. If I have to pick one, I think I'm leaning more towards the KM3s. But like I said, I, I really don't know. I haven't taken the time to actually assess which is better. So, yeah. The great thing about the six scales and why I think a lot of people love them is because they don't require a lot of upgrades to start out. I mean, obviously, there's some things that you're going to want to do and um, things are going to happen. But one thing I highly, highly recommend, I don't feel like these bad boys get their full turning potential. I definitely recommend a new servo in them. And I also turned up the voltage a bit on both of these. But if you're going to do that, you're going to need a servo that handles higher voltage. It will be fine, like until it's not. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Like it will work until it doesn't. 
So just something to keep in mind. If you don't want to put a new servo in right away, but you want to turn up the voltage, go for it. Um, I did that for a while and <laughs> knock on wood, nothing happened. Um, but I did just go ahead and, you know, throw some new servos in there because you're already driving a six scale truck. Why not make it the most amazing thing in the world? You know, so just a little side note, <laughs> they both have replica V8 engine covers. Yay. <laughs> um, I don't know who else is excited about that, but I think it adds to the scale look. So I thought I'd throw that in there for you guys. I, I like that they kept that feature to the honcho. So both the honcho and the Jeep come in weighing 25 pounds. So my advice to you is to get two batteries. They have dual battery trays, so you can fit two in there. Um, if you're going to run a Y harness, I recommend having four or at least three batteries with you and really, really paying attention to your battery indicator level. You guys, <laughs> you don't want to be carrying this thing back to the truck, although it would be a good workout. But let me tell you, it's not fun. I actually had an incident where I took my Jeep out. We had just gotten there. All I did was turn to go down this one little embankment. And my tie rod, like, snapped. <laughs> and so I was trying to, like, drive it back to the truck. It wouldn't drive straight, of course. So I ended up having to carry it. And it just, it wasn't super fun. It, it would make a good workout. You could probably squat these things and get, like, super jacked. But I'm not about that life. <laughs> I don't want to be super jacked. So they kept the three-link front and the four-link rear suspension. They took that from the Jeep and also added that to the honcho. So that just adds in the durability and stuff. I really like that. And also, they neither of them have portal axles. Um, but the ground clearance is pretty decent with it being a six scale. So it's not like a super big problem. Um, but yeah, I do get hung up sometimes not having the portal axles. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it's like a, a negative quality. Um, I just think if you had portal axles, it would help in crawling. It would make it even more that more that much more amazing. But yes, it, neither of them do. So that's a similarity that they have. Also, they both have two speed transmission, which I love. And I'm actually going to be taking the dig servo, the dig function out of my 10 scale gladiator and putting a two speed in it, I think, because I just don't use the dig function as much as I thought I would. And I feel like I would use the two speed more because some of the places we go, you have to trail for a little bit and then there's like some areas to play and then you have to trail some more and then there's some areas to play. And, you know, I just don't want to be a snail on the trail. <laughs> that rhymed. These two already have them. So that's a plus. Um, and also watch which speed you're using because that will also, you know, obviously wear down your battery. If you're running full wide open the entire time, your battery is going to go downhill significantly faster than if you were in low gear and you want low gear for obviously crawling and stuff. So, yes, keep that in mind. They both also have spectrum technology, which I have said a thousand times that I love. I just think Spectrum is easier to work with, um, but for Axial, I really like Spectrum stuff. I have majority of the smart spec smart Spectrum batteries, and uh, those, if you didn't know, fun fact, they discharge automatically after, like, I think it's 72 hours. Um, so I really like that feature because there's nothing worse than coming home from a long day out and having to, like, discharge all these batteries and some you didn't use, so it takes hours, and it's like, oh... I don't have time for that. So the fact that they automatically discharge after a certain amount of time is just amazing. I cannot speak more highly about Spectrum and no, I'm not sponsored by them yet. So now that I've given you some differences on them and some similarities and all that, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk, um, I'm going to take them out and show you guys what they can really do on the trail and stuff. Um, I think if you've never seen these run before, have you been living under a rock? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I think you're going to be really surprised at how similar they crawl.
Um, I really think it's going to come down to personal preference on which setup you prefer. You know what I mean? So essentially, they are the same car. They're both great and amazing. I love them. But yeah, I think it's just going to come down to personal preference for which one you, which one calls to you. Which one do you feel drawn to? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope I made you laugh. I hope you learned something. I really hope you hit that red subscribe button because I have so much planned for the future, especially for 2023. Um, I feel like I'm going to start that year off strong. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I will talk to you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.